Hello YouTube, Steve-O Trucker here. Well, if you're new to the channel, welcome to my channel, and to those who aren't, welcome back. <laughs> just fueled up at the moment just a reference what we're doing and this chat is not related to where we fueled up it is in general if you know what I mean so what we're going to talk about today is uh, the state of UK services and this is obviously going to be a very touchy subject and very iffy subject should I say Primarily because you know there, there is good services out there, and I want to get that out there. There is good services, good truck stops. The vast majority of truck stops are good. You know, so this is mainly aimed at your mainstream services. This talk. I'm not saying there isn't any bad, you know, truck stops. There's one or two that I can recall. But in general, this is more of a go of you know. I'm going to hit on the first bit of the subject right now is the cost of parking at your mainstream services is outrageous. The amount they charge is just purely outrageous. And yes, if you pay a pound or two more, you get a £10 mill voucher, for example, at a lot of, say, motor road chefs and that sort of nature of, you know, motor services, which you can only it's not too bad. At least you get something back in it. Yes and no at the same time. Really is nothing in the long run. That really is nothing to them. That's just like, yeah, freebie, effectively. <laughs> Try and make it not seem as bad. It's a bit like how, you know, services once used to when you fueled up give you a free tea or coffee. Remember. You might not remember those days, but you know, I know I was really young in those days, so you know, I was a kid. Especially out, you know, out in Europe, I think there's still some places in Europe where it is still the case. I know things are more expensive these days, the tax rates up higher, you know, stuff like that, but my more what I'm trying to get at is they are targeting a group of people who are very highly regulated. Who in a lot of the cases are, don't have a choice or but a choice to use the services. And not all get covered by the companies, and yet, you know, if the company covers it, where do you think that money comes from? The, you know, companies aren't charities. They don't have an unlimited budget. They don't go around and uh, put some money in to support your company, <laughs> support charity. <laughs> you know, that could be your pay wise. You know, potentially it could be. Or it could be your new truck. That you're wanting <laughs> gone <laughs> into paying for parking just for example not not the case in all the time but what I'm more getting at is the fact of how much uh, on average it's about 30 pounds especially down hit down south to park at services on average not all of them you can go far cheaper and you can go more expensive than that i've even seen one that's pretty much 40 pounds was £39 with mill voucher. Are you thinking, first, just round it up, £40 to park for potentially, if you're on the short break, nine hours. Nine hours for 40 quid. I know, yes, if you're comparing it to staying in a hotel or something like that, you might say, oh, that's not too bad. But this falls on to the other bit of the complaint, is the state of the facilities. The showers, 
even at the ones that charge biblically a huge amount of money to park at, can be a right joke. And it's not just because there's been about five other drivers in ahead of you. Quite often the case is they only might get cleaned maybe once, maybe twice a day if you're lucky. And the cleaners aren't really too bothered about keeping on top of the shower room. And then you look at the toilets, and you sometimes go, really? I'm not expecting to go into services and it to be 110 to Macklin, by the way. You know, before anybody says, oh, but I'm not going to get it as it was brand new every day, it would cost far too much to do that. Yes, I agree. But basic cleaning is simple. The other big complaint, that a lot, not a lot, but there's also ones that allow the bins to fill up and they leave them full for days. So much so, litter blows around the truck parks. Let alone wax and all that. You know, the truck parks also tend to be like hold or, you know, basically massive potholes in them. Call a few motos that have those. I'm not saying there is also some, or certainly one truck stop I can recall that has, or used to certainly have, some really nasty potholes in so much so. I remember when a car came in and it bottomed out in one of them, which is funny in principle, amusing, but if you were the car driver, you'll be nuclear about it. I mean, yeah, you could argue, how did the car driver not see this? Because it was daylight. Yeah, it is what it is, but, you know, you wouldn't expect that in a facility. You have to pay to park it, do you? And that's one that you even had to pay £5 to do your 45-minute break in. When even a lot of truck stops are still free. You know, you're like... That's very cheeky for a place that the truck park itself is is not really maintained at all. There's zero maintenance. And you're charging five pounds. Yes, they have a right to charge you, but if you go charge somebody, at least keep on top of your premises. And it's been like that for an awful long time. It's not like it just happened overnight. You know, they've just allowed it just to go to that state. And I know it's a tough game, certainly on the truck stop front, you know services and that they've got the monopoly you know so i have no sympathy with their services whatsoever certainly the mainstream services i have zero sympathy for i'm not having a go at the staff they work for them it's not the staff's fault and i'll highlight in this video don't have a go at the staff they only work there you know they don't write the policies they they're just like you are instructed by your company to do certain things, they're instructed to follow certain rules as well to do things. Obviously within reason. And I find a lot when you, you politely talk about the irritations of, of it. You know, who do actually 100% sympathise. And this leads me to another thing before anybody starts accusing me of saying we should have free services then goes, oh how do you expect them to cover all the costs of bins and all that? No, I'm not claiming they should be free. I'm claiming they should be, you know, five or ten pounds to park at. Realistically. And that would cover the operational costs generally. With them, certainly a lot of these big ones. That, I'm talking here at the mainstream services here, and they can offset it so easy at these places. Yeah, the amount of profit they make just as general services, let alone from truckers parking at night. I know, yes, they apparently don't own the land as well as government owned, but then again, that shows an even more bigger issue, doesn't it? So you're like, hang on. <laughs> so it should be cheaper then. <laughs> And yet the security at these places is a joke. You know, even ones that do have have guards on at 
and I'm talking about your mainstream service here, not your high security truck stops. That's a different ball game altogether. That's actually, they generally are very secure. But I've been to a few motos, for example, or Susie Moto, for example, that have a nightman on, only on night, only. <laughs> and I've had fuel nicks at them. I've known people had stuff cursed and slashed, all sorts of stuff. No, stuff you go, hang on. If you have a nightman, if he's not doing regular walk rounds, how did he notice that all night long? That that truck had its whole curse hanging down. And it's not always in the area that's very hard to see. Sometimes it's in a blatant area. And you're like, hang on, there's something fishy going on here. And when you meant put a complaint in, or you're the one who's been thieved off by the fuel or whatever it was, they don't want to know. It's just like, oh, we'll just write it down in a complaint book and we don't do anything about it. When you, when you challenge the staff about it, going, look, you know, what do you do? Well, what's your responsibility to get off the police? We don't really care about that. We just log it into the book and that's all that happens. Huh? So you're not going to look at your CCTV? Or... No, it's not, well, it's not down to, to, to us to do that. You know, who is? Well, we do not know. That's what, that's what a lot of these places you get. If you have an issue like that. And you think you're paying what? Thirty pounds, forty pounds, fifteen pounds, even. Which is, yeah, it's not like it's a small amount of money. You know, certainly thirty pounds. I mean, it's not a small amount of money, and you know, I've parked at all the motos before I got into this job, probably a month or two before. Hot there for a night. I think I was loaded, I may have been loaded, I can't recall if I was loaded or not. But I basically had my fuel stolen. I even had my fuel cap was locked, believe it or not, but they don't know how what they must have done, but they got the fuel cap off and sucked it out through I had a, had a siphon thing I think on it as well, but like they must be using small pipes or something. Luckily I could fuel up there. Actually, no, I couldn't fuel up there, but I had to fuel up. So I was authorised to put 10 dry litres in by the company and get to one of the ones that we could use. It was lucky I had just, there was just enough fuel in there to get me around to the metro station. Otherwise, it might have been a bit more of an interesting <laughs> situation to be in. But they just didn't want to know about it. When I went into the moto services and mentioned it to them, I said, you know, I have got hold of the police and all this reported it. I think the police weren't really bothered about it either. But I would expect the facilities to be a bit more, okay, uh, where about saw your park driver? Okay, uh, could we have a camera around there? You know, or at least check, or at least have a word with the, the night security guy who apparently was on. I said, do you notice anything suspicious or, you know, I know, yes, fuel theft is probably one of the, I wouldn't say necessarily the hardest spot, but I, it could be another truck who did it, as far as I'm aware, but at the same point, it's not the point principle here. You know, you're paying a serious amount of money, and you could still have stuff stolen, and they don't really care about it. Honestly, they do. Not, not at my experience, anyway. Not, I've had a few instances at them. And also no other drivers have had probably some even more serious stuff happen at them. And just the general feedback I've I've heard is they really do not care on the security front. Even where, when they have a security guard at that facility. Or a nightman, shall I say. You know, in the truck park apparently. You know, you actually do see them on occasion. So I'm not saying they don't, it's just I don't feel they're doing the job properly. You're not getting your money's worth out of the £30, really. Maybe if you had a nice wash facility, they provided you with a clean towel, and some soap, and stuff like that, and, you know, you had a free coffee in the morning. <laughs> maybe so, or maybe a free meal. I might actually go £30, that's maybe not so bad then. Um, looks good, okay, quite reasonable. With a night man on as well. Happy days. 
my American service to manage it, but we don't really have anything like that, so <laughs> that's probably a very new principle there. But it is what it is. I understand services need to make money, and you know, they are our business, so in their own right. It, you know, it is private land, and this is what I'm saying, I'm not saying this should be free. I'm more in favour for them to be around five or ten pounds. I'm quite happy to scrap, say, the mill voucher if they're between five or ten pounds. It's actually fair enough. It's pretty reasonable, and it gives the driver a choice of either using the facilities in terms of the food outlets in there, or gives them a free choice of actually going. Actually, I'll use food that I've brought with me. Yeah, when you look at the food outlets that are in the, in a lot of services, I'm not saying there isn't any healthy options there, but some the healthy options aren't exactly cheap either. I know, yes, I think, uh, it Moto? Because Moto has the calf thing that we re revised lately, which is a good idea. And, you know, you can argue they have been improving them, which I'll give them that a little bit. But still, in general, you look at what they offer food-wise and it's very mediocre. It's only if you want to eat reasonably healthily. And even when you want to eat healthily, your choice is very, can be very limited or very defined. As normally it's between a Burger King or a fast food outlet of that nature. You might have a restaurant if it's open, that's the other one I've noticed, that quite often the restaurant isn't open really for a long time, or isn't at all. You might have a Waitrose or M&S or an outlet of that sort of nature in there, which yes, could give you a reasonable amount of choice, but you can't use your food voucher in that. And this is what I'm more aiming this, this bit chapter is where can you spend that food voucher and you're like normally it's at the fast food reliably maybe at a costa but you look at what's the cost off you set for very expensive coffees yes they offer sandwiches and all that but if you want a nice hot meal you, you divide down to the fast food restaurant a lot of the time and if the cafe is open or you know whichever like to call the cafe and that's on them yes you do have a good choice you might well, necessarily a good choice but you might have a choice of say a fast food outlet uh, oriental-ish sort of outlet and maybe the version of a calf or another burger outlet <laughs> and you know that, I just don't feel that you know services are doing the job I just feel there's more of an embarrassment they're just there literally to rob you of your hard earned money all day long. I understand they are a business, I understand they've got to make money and, you know, I'm not expecting to be throwing them tons of free stuff at us, no. But, we got to be realistic, who supplies these places? You know, it's as drivers. Now, if they can afford to give bus drivers free meals or free or half price vouchers, I know they ain't even came back on that now, showing how, how much they are trying to cut back on things and profit on things and all that. So I don't see that happening. I understand why bus drivers get it, because they bring a lot of people who will spend money. And yes, I get, I fully understand that. And you could argue, oh, truck, trucks take a lot of space up, and that's not a space that could have been car parking for more and more customers. Yes, I can see, but Sadly enough, in that same old fact is that we've got to park somewhere as well. And as a truck drivers, we are very limited on our choice. If we want to have any form of facility or shop parking, generally it's quite limited. Unless you know area really well, where you can park behind the superstore or, you know, but that's not very common. You know, 
I'm not a driver that will go way off route massively, completely massively off route to go somewhere. I'm a big believer on going fairly direct. I will divert marginally to get to the odd little thing if I need to pop in somewhere to get something. But in general, we are quite restricted of where we can park up to have access to a toilet, a showers, real basic stuff like that. Let alone reliable rubbish drop-off points. Like I've got my rubbish bags full. I didn't drop it off at one minute to today because all the bins were full. And you hang on. <laughs> and that's actually one of the Euro garages that charges you to park up. And that one is a joke. You go in and you know, you're paying to park here, but yet you can park free at the oval Euro garages. I'm not saying that's not without its issues, but at least it's free and you have access to a toilet pretty much three four hours when it's working. <laughs> you know, and a proper toilet, not a porter loo. <laughs> and the sh you know. But as I say, it is what it is, you know, I could go on all day long and go through quite a few services and go, right, well, the shower box and all these ones, or hit and miss, and, you know, and, and that's where the, you know, offer certain facilities, you know, it does make you wonder. And on the truck stop front, a lot of the truck stops tend to be quite good, you know, or very good in some cases, and, you know, different planet good compared to services. And yes, you can argue, oh, that's more focused on the truckers, yes, that might be one of the pure reasons why. But, it does embarrass mainstream services, though, because you'd like, they aim to offer a better service to a more a specific type of people, and they often do have a side business to car people to come in to go to use a cafe or restaurant as well. So in some ways, you know, there's a bit of embarrassment to mainstream services to go, actually, you know, wake up, <laughs> smell the grass, as they say. Yeah. I just honestly think the state of mainstream services in the UK is an utter joke and it's a national embarrassment to be honest. And I don't feel any shame in what I said. You know, it needs to be brought out there. I know a lot of other YouTubers have touched upon it. You know, I'm not claiming to touch upon it fully, no. But, you know, more and more of us who speak up about it it's going to get noticed eventually. It's going to, going to hit a button with somebody all these days and go, actually, is this actually fair what we're doing? You know, we are literally taking the nick here. We're taking, and as I was about to say earlier, they are taking advantage of a very highly, highly regulated group of people who are sometimes forced to stop off at their services. And they're charging them £30 no matter what. Even if, you know, and let alone if you choose not to park up the fine, then the company is quite within its rights to pass the fine on to you, which you know, it could be £100 or more. I know there is ways of getting around it, right or wrong, <laughs> but. I'm not one of these sort of people just get around it, you know, this is where we need to clean things up within the country, within the industry. Have a clear, defined standard across the services, you know, even as a driver's charter towards all services that are offered towards drivers. You know, they, you know, if they go charge a certain amount, it's then got to meet that certain level. You know, if you're charging £30, whoa, You've got to be offering, you know, something really, really incredible. You know, as I said, you might have to throw in a nice clean towel for showering. You know, nice hot meal and maybe a coffee in the morning. 
you know, go in, clean your free coffee of your choice, nice large one. You know, truck stops to be maintained very well, the toilet facilities to be really on top of it. But as I said, I, I'm not expecting my, my video to change anything. Just have to watch it down here, it's a bit toy narrow. After 300 yards, turn left. Because people don't expect how big trucks are. <laughs> they think they're driving a big car and they see a truck and they're ah, <laughs> big. Yeah. So, comment down below, if you, feel free to comment down below, you know, how do you think the state of UK service facilities are? You know, I'm on the highlights at this stage, I understand there is the old good one in each train. There was always an exception to the rule, but in general, I think it is a joke. And they are taking the mickey, and they are taking advantage, as said by regulations. <laughs> I think, yeah, in part, I'm not saying that they shouldn't charge at all. You know, I'm, I understand why they charge. You know, you quite you right to charge people to use your land or your facilities, but as long as it's reasonable. Did see that bike coming down there till. Was pretty much committed into my line. Never mind. Yeah, but as I said, comment down below what you think. As I say, you know, there is good facilities out there, but in general, I think, yeah, I wouldn't say they're far few and apart, but they're not far off that, to be honest. And to be honest, there's no organisation that will hold these facilities, per se, to account for us. You could argue there is, but not really. Not, not for how long they've been doing it for as well, you know. And he, even if there were, I think, you know, if there's an enforcement group out there, you know, if hygiene standard group, they turn a blind eye a lot of the time, I think. whatever you like to call them. And yeah, as I say, I think there should be maybe some sort of driver's charter or something like that. That states towards the industry, you know, how drivers should be treated and what the rest facilities should be. I know there was a big hoo-ha with, uh, with the transport union the other year about services. And they all they came out, yes, we sorted it all, they all now have to meet this certain requirement. I won't be seeing that much change on that front at all. To be honest. Maybe in the areas where they're aiming specifically at, but in general, no. No change whatsoever. Really. Personally, at my experience, I could be wrong. I know it After takes time to implement a lot of things as well. Left. But yeah, I'll put it in here because as I said, I could go on all day long about this subject. Just quite naturally, as a driver, I find it a, a bit of a passion to talk about. And I don't think it's a subject that's overly... I wouldn't say it isn't overly talked about, but it's sort of added into a video of vloggers YouTube. They don't overly talk about it specifically. There has been the odd one. Not denying that there hasn't. I'm not going to claim any white of this subject at all, no. More vloggers who come out and talk about the issues of UK services, the better, in my opinion. Because at the end of the day, eventually, it will get out there. It will hit the CEO of so-and-so services, and then they might actually start to look at it in real, well, maybe not, but it might hit a nerve somewhere. I mean, actually, we need to start altering it so it's hurting our web now. But 
like it's very hard. Now, I know there'll be other drivers out there who say, why don't you boycott services? It's easy to say boycott services. But what if you need to quickly grab a drink somewhere? Or you're really tired of time, you're not familiar with the area. Or you know it's an area you go really struggle to park up, except from in that services. You know, sometimes you're forced into it. Even if it's once a year, it's still worth to talk about. You know, boycotting, I don't think it's going to rectify it, you know, it, you know, unless if you, we've got the whole industry underneath our hand and go, right, every driver boycott it now, you know, we'd, we'd park up on the hard shoulder, which would be illegal by the way. You know, where can you park up on the motorway? It's free. Or at reasonable cost, very few places. Tends to be truck stops in general, <laughs> if it is reasonable, you know. I know there is the odd driver who does boycott services as best they can, and yes, hats off to them, you know. But, in, you know, it's okay in Pacific standards, or if you've got Pacific routes that you know every bend and where you can park up. But it still doesn't sort the problem out, does it? You know, it hasn't sorted the problem out, you know. I'm not calling we should all boycott the services, because, you know, how would that be done? It wouldn't be fair to just say that out as that sort of easy fix, put the plaster on quickly. It's not the cure. And, yeah, as I said, a lot of cases, you're not... You don't really have the option. You know, it's out of your... Your control that you're having really stopped there. Sometimes you're in court in traffic and you did plan to park up somewhere else but you can't get to somewhere else but the nearest safe place that you park up before you run out of your time or after you've run out of your time in some cases is the services if you like it or not. And you know you could argue or what you can slightly get past them and go no no a bit further and pretend it was I got delayed after that but if you get caught doing that it's not worth it seriously isn't you know you wish you'd been truthful to the cause yeah but I'll leave it at that for the moment as I said comment down below if you have any suggestions any ideas or any thoughts on it or what's your point of view on it you know do, do you think actually the service in the UK are pretty good I mean yes you go to a third world country yes you probably might argue going up to him yeah, you could argue maybe they might be a bit better, but as you're probably seeing, in some cases, I think it might be better in a third world country in some places. <laughs> I know it could always be worse. Just let's go. It takes some time to re engage your gears. Oh, there's drivers he flash you out but he doesn't realise it takes you time to excel so he's constantly like flashing going, come on come on come on I'm not as quick as you to accelerate off the point <laughs> even though I'm empty yeah so as I said I'll leave it there because I mean this has now come slightly over half an hour rant about services and yeah if you're another vlogger who sees this you know feel free to do maybe a video on it yourself to talk about it from your perspective as well as a driver if you know what I mean a truck vlogger because more of us who talk about this issue and it's probably even the same with pay as well it puts more pressure and pressure and pressure on the industry and the sub industries After that support our industry yards, turn left like services you know in this particular case so my main aim is if you are a truck vlogger and you do see this I'm not saying you must go make a video on it but if you've had the similar amount of passions Certainly. with the job and the issues of of service facilities in the UK and you and you haven't really properly touched upon it specifically maybe consider so Because said, more of us who talk about it is more likely it's going to hit a button somewhere. 
you know, the person upstairs might pay a bit more attention and go, actually, we might need to look at this or do something about it. But as they always say, if you don't say a thing, you don't mention it, nothing will ever get done. Same as if you don't do anything, you know, so I need to sort out that sign sometime. I have put a bungee behind it, but I don't think it's overly working properly. Who it's surprised if it's come off. <laughs> Never mind, that's a different discussion for another day. So if that's a bit distracting, I do apologise. It is secure on now, it does wind me up and it moves about a wee bit. When you hit the bump, especially on the farm, so it's good. Even though I've tied it down at the bottom of all sorts, never mind, I'll leave that for the moment. Yeah, so thank you very much for watching. And to all those who have subscribed and watched my videos, as I always say, thank you very much. It is always seriously appreciated. And I do apologise, I have ranted on for over half an hour now. But I, as I said, I feel this is a subject that needs the coverage. It needs to be debated about and talked about and brought out into the open, you know, for everybody to see. Even if it embarrasses the services, because that's what it might have to come down to. We're going to have to embarrass them to get them to change their ways. You know, no one else is going to do it for us, so why don't we do it? That's my biggest view, within reason. And uh, the other thing I want to highlight, and I highlighted it earlier, don't go into services and have a go at the members of staff, because it's not their fault in general, it's the management. And how they manage these places, how they've, you know, worked out the costings, and, or not so in some cases. You know. And it is what it is. I don't expect anything to change because of this video alone or anything like that. But hopefully it could be combined. Or maybe it might make a difference. You never know. But as I say, if I don't say anything, nothing can be done. So I'll catch you in the next one. And th thank you once again for watching. Over and out.